Welcome back to my top 100 Formula 1 moments of all time. Last time, we tackled the top 10 race starts and top 10 pit stop blunders. But now, we're going to go into a more serious topic as we go through the top 10 crashes in Formula 1 history. Well, my top 10 crashes. Honourable mention for the top 10 crashes, Monaco 2004. Now, there was two options I could have had for this. I could have had the Schumacher, the Michael Schumacher crash <clears throat> under the safety car, bizarrely. How he managed that is beyond me. Uh, small collision with Montoya. Lost the back end, tried to correct it, slammed himself into the wall at the tunnel, and that was him out of the race. But the crash in question was a result of Takuma Sato's massive engine blow-up. He did not have much luck when it came to engine reliability that season. And as a result of his engine blow-up, nobody could see what was going on. And there was another two or three cars that got taken out in the process, one of them ending up effectively upside down, and the other being the McLaren of David Coulthard. Number 10, let's kick off the list. And my goodness me, this was a scary one. Some of these are bizarre, some of them are just flat out scary. And this falls into that first category. The US Grand Prix of 2004. Sticking with the 2004 season for the moment. It was a very scary crash for Ralph Schumacher. Resulting in his... Resulting in a massive tyre failure. And he ended up with spinal damage. He was still in his car for quite a while. But thankfully no major injuries apart from spinal issues. Which forced him to miss six races throughout the second half of the season. He did manage to come back to full strength in Japan. So at least he was able to get back behind the wheel. Number nine now, sticking with the 2004 season, and we have got the crash of Kimi Raikkonen. Now, at this point in his career, he was yet to... He had yet to finish a German Grand Prix. And this race continued that streak. How did it continue the streak? Well, let's just say his rear wing just came off the car completely. And James Allen's exact words that day pretty much summed it up in a nutshell. Massive rear wing failure for Kimi Raikkonen and a huge accident for the McLaren driver. That was very, very scary. And he was not joking. That was close to about... That must have been close to somewhere in the region of about 170, 180 miles an hour. And amazingly, no safety car. Number eight now, and this one is infamous in F1 folklore. It's Canada 1999, and long-time F1 fans know exactly what moment I'm on about. It is, of course, the moment where we had not one, not two, but three drivers in the wall at the final chicane. Thus, dubbing it the Wall of Champions. And who were these unfortunate first names in that Wall of Champions? There was actually four drivers in the Wall of Champions. But three of them had become driver's champion previously. Those names being Damon Hill, Michael Schumacher, and Jacques Villeneuve. And who was the other driver unfortunate enough to hit the wall? 
That would be Ricardo Zonta. Although he never won a Formula 1 title, he did have a Formula 3000 championship to his name. But the other three drivers, Hill, Schumacher and Villeneuve, had all won the Formula 1 World Championship previously. Number 7. The 1999 European Grand Prix. Well, <clears throat> where to even begin with this one? We had a chaotic start in more ways than one. We had a delayed start. The events were as follows. Damien Hill's Jordan suffered an electric, electrical failure in the middle of the pack, which caused Alexander Wurtz to swerve into Pedro Diniz sending the Sauber into a barrel roll. Diniz mercifully was able to get out of his car uninjured. And the scariest part about it all? The Sauber's roll bar had actually failed. Number six, Australia. 1996. Martin Brundle's crash at turn three. Mercifully able to get out unscathed. Crashes back then. If they had happened another ten years beforehand, we could very well have seen the death of a Formula One driver. Number five. Australia 2016, 20 years later, at the exact same corner, Fernando Alonso had a massive incident. But again, just like Brundle, he was able to get out okay. It just showed how far safety had come in Formula 1 over the course of the last 12 year, over the last 20 years since Martin Brundle's incident before this one played out. <clears throat> Number four, another scary crash involving the 2001 Belgian Grand Prix. This crash was so scary and severe, it ended up causing a red flag. And the accident took place at the Blanchemont corner on lap five of the scheduled 44 race, 44 lap race, which ended up becoming 43 after after an aborted start. Luciano Berti went for a pass on Eddie Irvine on the inside of the Blanchemont corner on lap 5. Irvine caught off guard, stayed on the racing line though. Berti's left hand wheels ended up on the grass. And Berti's right front wheel ended up making contact with the Jaguar, removing Berti's front wing in the process, losing a lot of downforce. Irvine ended up driving over, Pro Pro over the Prost's front wing, destroying it in the process. And Bertie was sent spearing in across the gravel trap. The speed of the impact, 150 miles an hour. The full front of Bertie's crash helmet was gone. It took the force of 111 G's. 111 G's. And further and and the incredible thing is Bertie ended up being okay despite a severe concussion. Further injury was prevented because of the heck, uh, head and neck restraint that absorbed the impact, the, the hands device, ha head and neck support. Number three now. <clears throat> now this one's spectacular. 
and ended up there living up to a philosophy for one Red Bull Racing. Mark Webber's crash at the European Grand Prix in 2010, which was also the same day of England versus Germany at the World Cup final. Not going to get salty over it, apart from that Uruguayan referee who'd never saw the goal that should have counted. Back to Formula One. Weber effectively 360'd and ended up in the wall. He was able to get out okay. And that did prove. It proved on that day Red Bull certainly does give you wings. Number two, and we've got an old school pick here. And when I'm saying old school, we all know what we're on about here. Germany 1976. Let's just say the way Rush tackled that, that scene was just incredible. I remember seeing... I remember seeing that crash play out on in Rush for the first time back in 2013 when the film was released. And it was it was a tough watch. Being stuck in that car for about a minute. And Lauda was not expected to survive. It was so bad that he was administered his last rites by a priest. And incredibly, six weeks later, only missing three races, he was back on track for Ferrari at Monza in front of the Tifosi. How did he do in that race? Stay tuned to find out. So, let's get a recap of the top 10 so far. Number 10, USA, 2004. Number 9, Germany, 2004. Number 8, Canada, 1999. Number 7, Europe, 1999. Number 6, Australia, 96. Number 5, Australia, 2016. Number 4, Belgium, 2001. Number 3, Europe, 2010. And number 2, Germany, 1976. Number one, Bahrain, 2020. When I was in the process of redoing this top 100 list, I knew that I had to include this at some point point and just for the record no i didn't include san marino 1994 for obvious reasons roman grosjean's fiery incident fiery accident after a collision with daniel kavir at the start What makes this crash scarier than all the others is the fact that the force of the impact against the barrier effectively split the car in two. And incredibly, despite burnt hands, Romain Grosjean was able to walk out of that fire. It reached a point where, while waiting for the race to restart, I had to turn on the Formula 2 races from that weekend, just to try and calm me down. But there was still that sense of anxiety and fear that Roman could have effectively died in that crash. And he was back at the circuits to thank those who had saved his life the following week. And what makes it an even more incredible moment 
is the fact that the community bond the F1 community bonded together and voted for Roman Grosjean as their driver of the day and it was it was a beautiful sight to see and Grosjean is back racing again getting himself into IndyCar now hats off to him for literally walking through fire but of course in order to start a race first you need to qualify and your best chance of winning a race is starting on pole position honorable mention first monaco 2012 now bearing in mind Sh michael schumacher was in his 19th season he was in his 40s this was at monaco a track Notorious for being difficult to overtake on. What makes it an honourable mention though. Is the fact that the pole position officially never stood. Because of an incident that Schumacher was involved in at Spain the week beforehand. A couple of weeks beforehand. And as a result he ended up with a 5 place grid penalty meaning he wouldn't be starting from pole position, sadly. Otherwise, given the nature of Monaco, he would have had a very strong chance of winning that race. <music> On to the main top 10 now. Spain, 2009, Braun GP, and what a story it was. What a story it was that season. Rising from the ashes of Honda like a phoenix. Jensen Button crossing the line with one second left on the clock and somehow pulling it out of the bag. Number nine, France, 1999. Uh, a lot of these pole positions are like first time pole positions. So bear with me on this one. For the Stewart Grand Prix team. It would be their one and only pole position. But despite that. It was a very mixed up grid that day. Because... Excuse me. <clears throat> we ended up with wet conditions. Rubens Barrichello for the Stewart team managed to take full advantage of the wet weather conditions, ending up on pole, beating Jean Alesi by four tenths of a second. But that wouldn't be the biggest shock of the that wouldn't be the biggest shock of that seat of uh, that weekend. Former world champion Damon Hill missing out by two thousandths of a second of qualifying for the race because of the 107% rule. But despite this, they were, they actually waived the rule due to the spacing of the entire field caused by the weather problems. And they were ordered in the grid on the grid based on their free practice times. Therefore, Damon Hill was 18th, Delarosa 19th, Takagi 20th, Luca Badoa 21st, and Marc Genet 22nd. Number eight, the Italian Grand Prix of 2018, and it's the fastest average. The fastest average speed for a qualifying lap. Well, it was at the time. Kimi Raikkonen's pole position lap. Out qualifying the Ferraris, no less. Out qualifying his teammate, no less. A time of 119.119. An average speed of over 160 miles an hour. Number 7, Spain 2012, Pastor Maldonado. What an 
incredible performance from him during that whole weekend. Pole position and ending up getting the race win. Number six. A wet weather affected Turkish Grand Prix from last season. Lance Stroll. With daddy's cash, of course. For the Racing Point team, in wet weather conditions, beating Max Verstappen to pole position, Lance Stroll hadn't finished any higher than fourth in his qualified higher than fourth prior to this race. And despite the race falling apart from him, this pole position will forever be the first pole position of his career. Same goes for our number five entry, Hungary 2019. Max Verstappen had already notched up a handful of wins prior to this weekend, prior to the, this race weekend. But he had never secured pole position. That was until Hungary. And although he would start on pole, he would unfortunately be unable to take the race win thanks to the dominance of one Lewis Hamilton. Another throwback pick now at number four, San Marino 2004. Jensen Button in the BAR Honda team, back when they were at their peak. A strong, dominant lap from Jensen Button and incredibly... What did he manage to do? He managed to keep that pole position thanks to a couple of mistakes from one Michael Schumacher. Schumacher would only be able to start second. John Button, Jensen's dad, and Louise Griffiths, Jensen's girlfriend at the time, securing the pole position. And they were ecstatic. Another first time pole position here in the form of the Brazilian Grand Prix of 2010. Nico Hulkenberg in his first season for the team. Back when, back when Williams were so, so good. It was a joyous moment for Nico Hulkenberg. And it's not hard to see why. Force India's first pole position. Belgium 2009 at number two. Giancarlo Fisichella. Securing that pole position. Beggars believe how he managed it. And the other real talking point is the fact that Luca Badoa was unable to finish he was unable to get himself out of Q1 resulting in him being effectively booted from the team for the older F1 fans we'll know exactly what number one will be but let's get a recap of the top 10 so far number 10 Spain 2009 number 9 France 1999 number 8 Italy 2018 Number 7, Spain 2012. Number 6, Turkey 2020. Number 5, Hungary 2019. Number 4, San Marino 2004. Number 3, Brazil 2010. And number 2, Belgium 2009. It, it is a real shame that no footage of this lap exists. Monaco 1988, arguably the greatest qualifying lap in history. How great are we talking? For one, this is Ayrton Senna we're talking about here, arguably the greatest driver of all time. 41 race wins, 65 pole positions. And three world championships. All 
for McLaren. He outqualified Alan Prost, his teammate at the time, by one and a half seconds. Now, seeing somebody on pole position is already a great feeling, especially if it's your favorite driver. To see them on pole position by about half a second, seven, eight tenths, round about that sort of range, that's already a special achievement in itself. But Senna, Monaco, 1988, in arguably the most dominant car in history, winning 15 of the 16 races that were held that season, to secure pole position by a second and a half is absolutely astonishing. So from pole positions to race wins. Here we are. I am gonna men I am going to talk once again about the Sakia Grand Prix in 2020. But that is an honourable mention, since we already have that race in the top ten pit stop blunders. Sergio Perez was down to last after the start. And to rub the salt in, he didn't have a seat secured for the 2021 season at this point. Incredibly though, he was able to work his way back up through the field, taking advantage of mistakes, making overtakes, And he ended up giving Racing Point their first ever win. And it was also the first win of his career as well. That wouldn't be the only that wouldn't be the only race win that people remember from that season. Because we also have an incredible 2020 Italian Grand Prix, Pierre Gasly coming out on top. So into the top 10 itself, number 10, Canada 2007, and the first of what would be many pole position, the first of many race wins for one Lewis Hamilton. To call it phenomenal would be a massive understatement, because Lewis Hamilton has won every single he has won a race in every single season he has been part of since he debuted back in 2007 this would be the first of many race wins and of course it definitely wouldn't be the last number nine sticking with lewis hamilton his first home race win in wet weather conditions at Silverstone. Now, I remember being on holiday in Lanzarote with my family at the time. And it was an amazing sight to hear everybody cheering Lewis Hamilton on to win the race. Sticking with the Brits at number eight with 2006 the Hungarian Grand Prix over a hundred race starts and Jensen Button had yet to win a race over a hundred race starts and he was still unable to get that elusive race win despite this and starting 14th on the grid, he still carved his way through the field and ended up taking his first race win of his career. The first of 15 wins. Number 
Number seven, Monza, 2008. Sebastian Vettel's first win in torrential conditions where the top team struggled and the Toro Rossos with Minardi DNA thrived. Vettel took full advantage and he ended up on top. That performance alone was more than enough to promote him to Red Bull the following season. Number six, China 2012. Mercedes' third season back in Formula One. It would also be Nico Rosberg's first win of his career. And without a doubt, an incredible moment in Rosberg's career. Number five now, and we all know how special a home race win can be. But the challenge there only comes once a year. And that's if your country gets selected to host a race. The Sao Paulo circuit in Brazil is a fan favourite for many reasons. But of all the wins that Ayrton Senna took throughout his career, this will always be up there as one of the most special for him. Because it was the first time he ever managed to win a home race. He had tried time and time and time again. And fans thought, with a gearbox issue, fans thought, he's not going to get the win again. He's going to have to wait another year. Despite that, and the fact it was starting to rain, Senna secured his first home win of his career, on course to win his third world title. Number four, Belgium 1995. It was one of Schumacher, Michael Schumacher's greatest drives, without a doubt. On course to his second world title that year, he started the race from 16th on the grid. And despite starting 16th, he made a gamble on the tyre strategy. And it paid off. Number three. Ever wondered how Michael Schumacher got the name the Rainmeister? Well, it was all thanks to this race. He was just untouchable in his first season in Ferrari. He was untouchable in this race. And Murray Walker, the late, great Murray Walker, said it himself. Michael Schumacher wins the Spanish Grand Prix after an absolutely superlative performance. It was thanks to this race that he got the nickname the Rainmeister. Number two, and this was a record that I don't think anybody was expecting to break. The longest gap between race wins. Kimi Raikkonen, after about 130 race starts since his last win, despite that, he had a great start at the 2018 US Grand Prix. He was on a better strategy and he pulled it out of the bag, ensuring that the title race would keep going for one more race. Now let's get a recap of the top 10. Number 10, Canada 2007. Number 9, Brazil 2008. Number 8, 
Hungary 2006, number 7, Italy 2008, number 6, China 2012, number 5, Brazil 1991, number 4, Belgium 1995, number 3, Spain 1996, and number 2, USA 2018. Now this one, this number one pick is definitely going to be up there as one of the most emotional race wins of all time. Germany 2000. It was Rubens Barrichello's first season at Ferrari. And it was a closely fought championship battle between Michael Schumacher and Mika Hakkinen. And incredibly, neither Hakkinen or Schumacher were able to cope with the conditions that day. Rubens, on the other hand, bearing in mind he started 18th, he was on course for his first race win. To see the elation from Rubens after the race and just a flood of tears to say, yes, I have finally won a Grand Prix race. It was a very special moment for him. Now we're gonna re now we're gonna go for the polar opposites. Race wins to last lap disasters. Now these had to take place during the last lap of the race. So we're going to get the honourable mention for this one out of the way. Austria 2016. The collision between the two Mercedes. Rosberg being worse off. Hamilton taking the race win. Rosberg wouldn't even make the podium. There was a little bit of dissension between the two Mercedes drivers that season. Number 10. USA 2017. Max Verstappen managing to overtake Kimi Raikkonen with just a few corners to go. Securing third place, or so he thought. Max Verstappen ended up being demoted to fourth place after a time penalty for corner cutting while overtaking Raikkonen. Nineteen sixty eight at number nine, the Belgian Grand Prix. It was only round four of the championship. And one of the first races to take place after Jim Clark had sadly passed away. To call it a spectacular finish would be a massive understatement. A total of eight cars finished the race. Jean-Pierre Beltoise finished three laps down. Joe Siffert retired with, an oil, with oil pressure problems. Lucien Bianchi was two laps down. Jackie Oliver, transmission issue. And the last retirement was Jackie Stewart. He simply ran out of fuel. Incredibly, only three drivers finished on lead lap. Bruce McLaren, the race winner. Pedro Rodriguez, finishing 12.1 seconds behind him in his BRM in second. And Jackie X in the Ferrari, a further 27.5 seconds down the road. Number Eight, the 1985 Bel San Marino Grand Prix. Towards the end of the race, car after car ended up retiring because they had spectacularly run out of fuel. You had, in the build-up to the final lap, 
Derek Warwick, lap 56, out of fuel. Martin Brundle, lap 56, out of fuel. Nelson Piquet, lap 57, out of fuel. Ayrton Senna, lap 57, out of fuel. Stefan Johansson, lap 57, out of fuel. Alan Prost was a f uh, declared the winner initially with Elio De Angelis start finishing second, Thierry Brutzen third, and that was your podium. Incredibly, the last lap disaster was for Alan Prost as he ended up out of fuel as well. His car ended up being disqualified for being underweight. Promoting Angelis to first, Thierry Bootsen in second, and Patrick Tombe in third. This next incident would unfortunately see no points for Jensen Button. Australia 2006, his engine blew up effectively meters from the finish line. Try as he might, he wasn't able to get himself into the top eight by pushing his car over the line. Number six, Monaco 1982. Alan Prost crashing out at the end. And we had more cars retiring after they were supposed to have picked up the lead. Didier Peroni and Andrea De Cesaris had both run out of fuel. Incredibly, this allowed Ricardo Patrese to secure the race win. Peroni was second, De Cesaris was third. It was heartbreak for Lewis Hamilton in 2009 at the Italian Grand Prix at number 5. At the exit of the first Lesmo corner, it was... The race win had already been decided at that point, but Hamilton was still chasing down another position. Pushed a bit too hard out of the first Lesmo, into the wall, and that was it. He was going to get no points. Number four, Europe 2005. Now, just for a bit of context, context. This was the same week that Liverpool beat AC Milan in dramatic circumstances to win the Champions League final. A very badly flat-spotted tyre for Raikkonen saw Alonso closing in corner after corner, lap after lap. At about 150 miles an hour on the last lap, heading into the first corner, tyre lets go, just misses the BAR. He would have got a podium if he'd pitted, but instead, he was going to get absolutely nothing. Number three, Hungary 1997. This could have been Arrow's one and only win had it not been for a hydraulics failure for one Damon Hill. A hydraulics failure resulted in Damon Hill losing the lead, having to settle for second, and he finished behind that year's world champion, Jacques Villeneuve. This next one is just funny on so many levels. Canada, 1991. Mansell effectively stalled his car and he was just a few corners away from the win. And he was just... 
He was a little frustrated with himself, because the funny part about it was, well, one of the funny parts about it, was the fact that when the car got back to the garage, the car started up as normal. The cause? Mansell had revved just a little bit too low heading into the hairpin. Nelson PK was the victor on the day. And for the benefit of uh, any young kids, any youngsters watching, I'm not going to repeat what PK said. Because it's not exactly family friendly. Time to get the recap done before we get to number one. Number 10, USA 2017. Number 9, Belgium 1968. Number 8, San Marino 1985. Number 7, Australia 2006. Number 6, Monaco 1982. Number 5, Italy 2009. Number 4, Europe 2005. Number 3, Hungary 97. And number 2, Canada 1991. Now this was the first last lap disaster that I remember watching. Spain, 2001. Mika Hakkinen, comfortable lead, heading into the last lap. But then, his engine starts developing problems. And those problems escalate to the point where his engine just went kaboom resulting in Michael Schumacher coming through to take the race win. And Mika Hakkinen's reaction in this post-race interview after that race was pretty much a case of God damn it. So that's it for this part of the top 100 F1 moments of all time. We still have four left to go we still have four top tens left to go and you can see those play out next time hope you guys enjoyed what you saw if you did hit the thumbs up and if you want to be a dream chaser like myself hit the subscribe button down at the bottom and click the bell to join the dream chaser notification squad so you don't miss anything that i do on the channel the end cards are on the way and i will see you guys Next time, when I conclude my top 100 F1 moments of all time. See you later. Bye-bye for now.